Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another video on CyberChef. This is an introductory video, just to be clear, and this is aimed towards folks that are in the apprentice phase of their development cycle in the cybersecurity realm. So this is really meant for beginners, just to make sure that's clear. If you're beyond the beginner and still find this valuable, then awesome. I've, I feel like I've done really well. But this is part of a series of beginning level lectures for folks who are apprentices in the in the process of learning the tradecraft and, and the skills of someone that is in cybersecurity, be they at threat intelligence, uh, SOC analyst, researcher, you name it. doesn't matter. If you are in this industry and you haven't heard of CyberChef, it is a wonderful, wonderful tool that is basically the Swiss Army knife equivalent to Yara, which is another wonderful tool that will allow you to do static analysis and detection via rules. In this case, uh, I did an introductory video already where CyberChef kind of doing a rapid overview. Today, I'm going to talk about one of the operations, specifically a very simple operation here in data format, and that's called 2 hex dump. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put the operation here just so we can begin to refocus on it, but we have nothing for our us to look at initially to perform our hex up on. So let me talk about that. Uh, in, other, in other presentations of this, and sometimes in the past, I have just jumped right into it and told people, okay, here's hex dump, here's what, what it looks like and all this other stuff. But really before I do that, before I load a file up and we utilize it, I wanna talk about why. Why would I want to look at something in hex up? Why would I wanna take a file and run hex up on it? And really, this is a question of static analysis because that's what hex dump is used for primarily. It lets you look at a binary format, any binary format, and cast it in a way that is very human readable. It actually breaks it up into three columns, which we'll see here in a second, one of which is the offset in the file. So you can see data where it is laid out statically in a file, which can be incredibly useful, as well as converts a third column into ASCII equivalents to whatever it sees. And in fact, let me drag over a file. We'll talk to an example here. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this up. That's the image, as you can tell, that I've dropped in there. Good old CyberChef. And this is a JPEG that I've chosen to cast with the two hex dump operation. Now, I, I clicked a couple things, but let me talk about this. So normally when you look at an image file, this is what you see. If you open it up and view it via hex editor, this is what you would get as a different view. And like I was saying, it breaks it into three columns. One with the offset of the data lined up. Secondly, it's hexadecimal equivalent. And then lastly, a third column that has an ASCII equivalent. So it allows you to see a bunch of information at a glance, which is wonderful for static analysis when you're looking at files or, or portions of files. Now, I wanna talk about this and make sure I capture the why. Because again, what you want to do here is I want to look at a file and make the binary part of the file more human readable. And secondly, I want to see not only more human readable information, I'd like it organized in a way that I can easily determine where inside the file any particular piece of information lies. Hence why this offset column is really important. Now, the structure of hex dump is tailorable. And if you run it from terminal, you can do a lot more than you can do here in CyberChef. But for our purposes, to be clear, what, I've, what we've done here is it is set up to be 16 bytes wide. And that's a very standard. You can change this and make it more or less. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't care. Now, I prefer to see things with uppercase, so I have turned everything to uppercase hex. That's because of my personal vision and preferences. When I'm in terminal, I also color things and so on. So just like anybody who stares at it for a long period of time, you make adjustments to make it more legible for you. So up to you on which you prefer, it's completely tailorable. This width is also up to you. Again, you can shrink it and so forth, and we're gonna do that here in a second. But before I do so, I wanna talk about this offset. Now this offset is where this line began. So in this case, it began at zero. And so FF is at offset zero, and that byte is filled with the hex the decimal equivalent of FF. Now you may get here and think, oh, this is offset 10. That must be the 10th byte. And it should be immediately obvious that's not the case. This is actually the 16th byte, even though it's being shown as a 10. It is probably the number one thing I see people trip over in the beginning as beginners. Because we've chosen a width of 16, it's laid out in 16 bytes. 
So there's that piece, and then this begins 16. In hex, if you count things out, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and so on, 0, 9 becomes 0, A, 0, B, 0, C, 0, D, 0, E, and so on, until you get to 0, F, and then it iterates over to 10. And the simplest way for me to show that to you is to actually change this to 10, and we can do it here together. You can kind of see that it did not do what I wanted it to do. Let me change it. Here we go. Change it to 1. So here's our 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, all the way down through 9. So that's the ninth byte. 10th byte, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16th byte. Now, that's only important because, again, a common misstep that I see beginners struggle with is they look at the offset and they forget that this offset column is showing them the count of bytes and they think that that's a 10 versus an actual 16. And once you mess that up in the beginning, it tends to cascade. So you really wanna make sure you understand what that offset column is telling you. That way, if I wanted to come down and find this, I could come down and understand where I am inside of the file and then find that equivalent. All right, the second thing I wanna talk about is in the hex, this will render binary into its hexadecimal equivalent. Over here in the third column, this renders ASCII into its ASCII equivalent, and you should just think of it as its print equivalent, basically. Anytime it doesn't have a corresponding print character for ASCII, it will put a dot. That is why you will see a bunch of dots over here, but then you'll see different characters over here because it does not understand them, they all get a dot. And that's not a best example, but if you look here, you'll see that this whole line is full of dots in the ASCII column, but they're all 0, 06, 0, 05, 0, 07, 0, 08. Those have no printed character equivalents, and so they won't be cast, even though you could use this to understand what is being done at that part of the file. And again, the whole idea here is you want to look at a file, a binary file, in a different way. We're looking at it in three views, basically simultaneously, by offset, the data that's at that offset, and that data cast is ASCII all at once. And so when you're looking through memory or you're looking through dumps of information, or you're just looking at a file and you wanna see this, maybe you're trying to look for very specific combinations, you might want to know the ASCII and maybe some non-ASCII characters around it to use as a matching possibility. And so that becomes very important. This is where hex dump really shines and you can do it here in CyberChef, and you can actually use this in Cascade with other things. Though typically I start with casting something to hex dump, and then I might go to a YAR rule and cast a YAR rule so I can see it. You don't have to do that, it just depends on what you want to do. But typically this operation is fairly standalone, and its important point is you're trying to look at a file differently. Now, admittedly, you don't need a file. You could just have text input. Like I could randomly put some things in here and you'll see that it will render it in the same way that we did with the file. In this case, it takes my first line and it shows you this here. It nicely highlights it for you. And then it nicely highlights it for you, highlights it for you and so on. Now you see here, even though I put a space, right? I put a hit enter, I put a number in, you'll see that it still just continued to put it basically on one line because it's reading it statically. It's just going to keep going across. As far as it's concerned, this is part of the same stream of information. Now, I want you to note one thing here. You see that that ended in three fives. Now, that equivalent here is 35, 35, 35. And then you're going to see here this five shows up as a 35 as well, but there's this zero A in between. That's because I hit enter. And if you follow this one, you'll see that there's also a zero A. And also after this one, there's another zero A. And that can be rendered a couple of different ways. It can be one byte or two, depending on what how it's understood. But you could have all kinds of additional characters. And these are represented by the dots I was talking about as it doesn't know how to render those into something print equivalent. So this operation is just meant to be a handy way to see things. And I'm gonna say it repeatedly, 
use Hexdom to look at a file, a binary format in a human readable fashion in a way that you can easily piece through it. Because if I was talking to you as analysts and I said, look, take a look at this file and you pulled that file down and I said, go to offset 500, you could jump immediately to file offset 500 and see the same thing I'm seeing. It gives you a great way to orient inside the file. You might also know, having ran the file, that certain parts of the file as it was laid out statically are important and they equate to say important functions that are being used when it's ran and you can go and look at them statically craft a rule from that and use that to actually make a detection as just a case example of its use so just standalone two hex dump is a wonderful operation to use in cyberchef as apprentices and you're getting into this career field and learning about ways to look at things and perform intelligence or cybersecurity operations, this will become one of your best friends when you're looking at files statically. Its chief use is in static file analysis, but it does live in other ways too. You can look at it, you can kind of cast any file in this view and really reap a lot of information at a glance, which is kind of the best point about Hexnut that I can think of. So uh, thank you for your time. I just want to cover one thing on this particular video and I'll go into more details we go. If it wasn't entirely obvious before I close up here, you can go to and from Hexdump. So if I had, for example, this information, actually I'll use this handy one, replace input with output. I could turn this off and let's say I wanted to go from Hexdump, I could of course reverse it. It really doesn't matter, that's the beauty of CyberChef that makes it a little easier in some ways than trying to do this at terminal with script or with commands. It is very drag and drop, it is very visual. If that's an analyst that if you're an analyst type where visual things are very important to you to perform functions, then CyberChef is definitely a place where you will live, like just like with Jupyter Notebooks. It leverages many things visually that can help you get um, things streamlined and more efficient in your work. That's the best way to cover it. So uh, these are obviously interchangeable, which is what I was trying to say. Um, okay. Thank you. If you like this, please give us a like. If you like the channel and uh, you're like me looking forward to more upcoming pieces of CyberChef being covered, please follow our channel and subscribe and we'll see you in future videos. Thank you.